Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Said Dan channel, and this story is just cool as hell. An XRP YouTuber uh, shared some information, which it turns out it looks like it's probably the case that a particular individual um, lied to Congress. A video clip was unveiled by a Crypto Eddie, and uh, people in Congress ended up finding out about this clip specifically because she shared it, and so they wrote a letter to uh, to Gary Gensler, and 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 they cited a uh, Crypto Eddie in the footnotes, the, the, specifically the link which leads to this this video clip, where this guy says something that is clearly in uh, direct conflict with what he said uh, to Congress, sworn sworn statement. So uh, probably really bad for that guy, but cool as hell that uh, you know and my, one of my fellow XRP YouTubers as having that kind of impact. So I'm going to share with you the specifics here. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so here's a tweet from Crypto Eddie. She wrote, The tiniest footnote can make an impact. And, um, and here, I'll just make this full screen for a second, then we're going to circle back to actually what this was. I got to do things sequentially or else it's not going to make sense. Got to properly set the table here. But here you can see uh, a <laughs> number of individuals from Congress signing on to this thing. And there you go. That's uh, that's Crypto Eddie's uh, Twitter account right there. I just think it's cool as hell. It's like all this stuff that's been uncovered by our communities, uh, our community, It's it has been impactful in, in many different ways, in many different instances. And this is just the latest cool example. All right, so uh, just a quick bit of table setting here. Uh, there's a headline for May 23rd. This is from Crypto Slate. Prometheum becomes first crypto company to be approved by SEC FINRA as special purpose broker dealer. New York-based Prometheum Ember Capital, PMC for short, secured regulatory approval to become the first crypto-focused company to register with the, S the US SEC and FINRA as a special, a special purpose broker dealer. Uh, Prometheum Inc., PMC's parent company, announced the development on May 23rd and said it allows PMC to operate as a qualified custodian for digital assets. However, the firm will not offer services for Bitcoin due to the limitations of the license. And so here's a quote from Aaron Kaplan, the CEO of Prometheum. We expect that custodying assets in an SEC-registered broker-dealer will provide the regulatory protections needed to reestablish investor confidence increase institutional adoption and allow the industry to flourish end quote so there you go is this aaron kaplan just proven that every other entity out there in the united states is just going rogue like no 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 we're not gonna register we, we're bad boys we ain't playing by the rules the sec so just don't register is, is that really what's happening or is something fishy going on here now look we in the XRP community, broadly speaking, have been wondering what in the ever-loving hell is going on here because this Aaron Kaplan guy with Prometheum, although they've technically been, been around for a number of years, nobody had really heard of them until very recently when they started hitting the news here. And then this guy's getting approved for this by the SEC, which, you know, by the way, just from my understanding is there are particular restrictions and admissions that go along with this, which aren't actually favorable for the world of crypto, uh, including the fact that, so the reason they're actually not offering any services for Bitcoin. Think about that. The, the world's largest, best known cryptocurrency, they're not providing services. Why? Because with the license that they got, uh, they've got approval to, uh, to custody digital assets that can be deemed securities. So Aaron Kaplan here, Prometheum, is saying, yeah, well, we can house just about everything. Effectively, that's what he's saying, but not Bitcoin, because that's not included, he, he believes, on the uh, limitations of this particular SEC license. Well, isn't it funny that that's exactly what the SEC is arguing in the SEC v. Ripple case with this embodiment theory? You know, XRP represents all of the efforts and promises from Ripple. XRP itself does. It's the embodiment, the embodiment of that, the embodiment theory. So... So then Aaron Kaplan is saying stuff to that effect in front of Congress. And, uh, and then Gary Ginzer ends up actually even citing this guy. Uh, at some point, there was, uh, I'm not going to play the video, but I think it was, yeah, June 6th here. Gary Ginzer was on uh, CNBC talking about this stuff. And, hey, nobody else is registering, but we're making progress. We had Prometheum come in. And this is not actual progress. This is nonsense. A bunch of hoo-ha and jibber-jabber. 
But that's what happened. So he came in and he just kind of went like, this looks so fishy. What? In, does this guy know anything? Does he even believe the things that he's saying here? It's very peculiar. So this brings us to June 16th now. Here's a headline from the Crypto Basic. Promethean founder says SEC will win Ripple lawsuit. XRP community reacts. That's right. So that's the guy on your screen right there. This is uh, the CEO of Promethean, Aaron Kaplan, and he says the SEC's going to crush them Ripplers. Piece reads as follows. Aaron Kaplan, founder and co-CEO of crypto broker Promethean, has recently thrown his weight behind the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. In a recent interview, Kaplan said the U.S. SEC would win its case against leading blockchain company Ripple. Quote, I anticipate the SEC will win this Ripple case as every indication points to a decision in the commission's favor. End quote. And so he said to host Bobby Del Rio uh, in an episode of the Daily Drop Show. Okay, well, you know what? They're, they had some reactions. I'm not going to share all of them uh, just for the purposes of the time here. But one of the responses covered in that article from the Crypto Basic came from John Deaton's Crypto Law Organization. And Crypto Law wrote the following. Because there was a clip shared by DAI, and it was just it goes on for over six minutes, and this guy, Aaron Kaplan, saying things that clearly illustrates when it comes to securities laws, he does not know what in the ever-loving hell it is that he's talking about. But uh, his mouth hole's moving, that's for damn sure. So Crypto Law said, very odd. Nothing about the cases he cited, nor even the Hinman speech itself, or, or the warnings he got from the SEC staff about the speech support the notion that the token is a security. It is the one universal agreement in everyone's Howey analysis that the asset itself is never a security. Except, of course, in the SEC's legal theory in the Ripple case. So this guy doesn't seem to get anything except to cheer on the SEC with erroneous arguments. And that is peculiar, isn't it? Because outside of this, uh, nobody's saying the token itself is a security. That's just this novel theory the SEC is arguing in the SEC v. Ripple case. And they're uh, also, though, they're arguing it uh, in, the, in the Coinbase lawsuit as well. I covered that in a video the other day. They're really doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on that nonsense. But this guy is, is arguing it as if it's some sort of you know, legal precedent at this, at this state and point in time. So for the reasons he's doing what he's doing, I don't know. It looks weird. It looks fishy. I, 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 I can't tell you. It just it doesn't seem to currently pass the smell test, right? That's all I can tell you at this point. I don't have any additional thoughts on that, uh, except what broke today. Um, actually, well, hold on. Let me make sure I don't want to do this. Uh, oh, actually, let me mention this first. This is also from June 16th. Uh, Blockchain Association requests info on Promethean over suspicious approval. So I'm not the only one that didn't think that it, it, didn't, pass it, it didn't pass the smell test. Check this out. United States crypto lobby group Blockchain Association has filed a request with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission seeking information about the formerly little-known crypto company Promethean. The company became the center of the crypto industry's attention this week when its CEO Aaron Kaplan testified at a House hearing and gave its support of regulating crypto under securities laws and the SEC, a position that's starkly opposite to other vocal proponents of the industry. Um... On June 15th, Blockchain Association Council Marissa Koppel said the group filed a Freedom of Information Act request to the SEC seeking documents and communications related to Promethean. And so I don't need to read the rest of it. I just wanted to share with you. I'm not the only one that thinks that this is wacky and sounds weird. We've all been talking about this in the XRP community. It's very peculiar. This company just comes out of nowhere and happens to be perfectly in sync with Gary Ginsburg. I mean, the stuff that this guy says, this Aaron Kaplan guy, says... It, it might as well be Gary Gensler. <laughs> like, I get, he's just like, it's the same damn human, effectively. And he also apparently may have been lying to Congress. Whoops-a-doodles. So here's the latest news. This is from Bitcoin.com. U.S. Senator expresses concern over Promethean co-CEO's congressional testimony. And so what's covered here, this is uh, what highlights the information from Crypto Eddie, which is the thr a huge part of the thrust of, of, uh, of what is covered here. Because, and I'll just tell you here before going through the article, in the video clip uncovered by Crypto Eddie, this guy, Aaron Kaplan, he acknowledges that, um, that a Chinese firm that they're working with here, 
uh, it, it, they're, they're literally just partners. You know, they're, they're, like as in co-founders. Like the, 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 it's the same freaking company effectively. That, as it turns out, is in direct conflict with what he told Congress. That is not what he said to Congress. And there are serious implications. You'll see as we go through this. So check it out. Piece reads as follows. Republican Senator Thomas Tuberville from Alabama believes the digital asset firm Prometheum should be investigated by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and Department of Justice. In addition to Tuberville, the Republican lawmakers Mark Alford, Blaine Lutkemeyer, Ralph Norman, Byron Donalds, and Barry Laudermilk have also signed the letter. We write to express concern that Prometheum Inc. may have provided false false testimony to Congress or violated U.S. securities law, the letter details. And I'll pause to note, having listened to the clip, uh, it does seem that way. So I won't go so far as to say definitively that is indeed the case, that law was broken. I'm not going to go quite that far. I can't imagine what the response would be, though. So let's go a little bit further. Senator Tuberville points out that Prometheum's co-CEO, Aaron Kaplan, testified before the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Financial Services, stating that the company began developing its technology platform independently from its China-based partners in December 2019. However, audited financial statements and SEC filings indicate that Prometheum continued to rely on its partnership with Wanchain and Hashkey, subsidiaries of China-based entities, well into 2021. The senator emphasizes that the audited financial statements for 2020, included in Prometheum's SEC filings, clearly state that the company relies on Wanchain as its sole project developer. The loss of Wanchain services could ostensibly have a significant adverse effect on Prometheum's ability to develop and maintain its platform, raising questions about the claim independence from its Chinese partners. If Prometheum began developing its own technology platform totally independent of its China-based CCP-tied partners in December 2019, as Mr. Kaplan attempted to lead Congress to believe in his congressional testimony, why was this not made clear in Prometheum's SEC filings? The letter asks uh, Garland and Ginsler. Senator Tuberville urges Garland and Ginsler to conduct a thorough review of Prometheum's statements to Congress, its audited financial statements and SEC funds. Yeah, so again, not just that, but there's literally what could potentially be a smoking gun, this video clip from Crypto Eddie, where he's just saying, yeah, this, here's our best friends over here. <laughs> One chain. Oh, okay. Peace continues. The alleged inconsistencies in these documents raise concerns about potential false statements to Congress and securities fraud, through misleading SEC filings, the letter discloses. The senator concludes by highlighting the seriousness of making false statements to Congress, which constitutes a crime, and the implications of submitting false or misleading statements in SEC filings, which constitutes securities fraud. Tuberville insists that the, uh, the conflicting statements made by Prometheum in different forms, combined with its ties to China-based entities with CCP connections, underscore the need for a comp comprehensive investigation. And so there you go. And um, here, I'll just pull this up. I don't feel the need to read through all of this. I just want to make the broader points. But if you want to see the part in question, here's footnote nine where I'm circling. You can pause right here and read through this particular page if you want. In fact, I'll just put all four pages in case anybody actually wants to pause for each one of them. There's page one. There's page two. You guessed it. Page three's next. You're good at numbers. And then there was also this one just with some more signatures. So here you can see, though, on page three, again, so this is what was referenced nine where I'm circling. A footnote down here, Sinto Sumo Saba. That is Crypto Eddie, my friends. Cool stuff. It's just, it, it never ceases to amaze me, the stuff that the XRP community uncovers and how impactful it is in the real world. Cool stuff. So we'll see what happens here. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan. <laughs>